Did he have a fire as well? Had a fire as well. Let me tell you something. Uh, so uh, since then, uh, Chris bought the building back in 2010 and 2011, uh, proposed to make it uh, into a restaurant use again uh, on that building. Uh, as I mentioned about uh, the experience of learning what happened, because the question came up is why was it uh, proposed then not to have two stories, was that uh, Chris didn't realize, not that anyone else, that the damage from the fire and water intrusion uh, required that we completely reconstruct the foundation, uh, the basement floor, uh, the floor on the first floor, and the ceiling and roof. Uh, so the entire building prior to Giovanni's uh, build out of the restaurant itself had to be reconstructed as if it were a brand new building again uh, because of the damage that was done, uh, a combination, as they say, of, of the fire and the water intrusion. So uh, that resulted in uh, considerable expense for, for Chris, not only for acquisition, but for doing that. So uh, Chris then looked at it, and will tell you that when he first looked at the property, he looked at it as a residential building. It's 900 square foot on the lot. The building itself occupies about 700 square feet. Um, residentially, uh, there were two uh, staircases that were required for residential use and upper floors. Uh, if, in fact, it became a residential building, they're very small units to begin with, so he kind of scrapped the idea of a five-story residential building. Uh, the use of the building once it was rushed on the first floor is impractical any longer for residential because taking two staircases out of the restaurant and two staircases out of the upper floor uh, leaves you with something about 500 square feet of usable space, uh, which makes a very small either residential or restaurant use. And as we're saying, currently there's only 34 seats to begin with uh, on that level. So, with those factors, Chris has asked to come forward with the proposal to add to the building. Um, we have mentioned to you before, we have mentioned to you again, uh, some people are going to uh, going to the second floor for a restaurant or not, that was a new idea. Uh, well, he will be the 16th new idea because there were 15 other restaurants in the neighborhood uh, that have second floor occupancy uh, and use, so it's not Nothing at all. Uh, needless to say, Salem Street is also our, one of our commercial areas. It's a neighborhood shopping district. Uh, mm -hmm. We do have lots of uh, restaurant activity on that street. We have also given you in that packet, I believe, uh, letters from each of the property owners uh, that surround this building. Can you just tell us where in relevance these? I have to tell you right now. Um, <laughs> Billy Cavallo uh, owns the building behind that you see in the photographs and on the Strari. That's a Stillman Street address. Uh, Mr. Corbiello owns this building on Stillman Street. Uh, it would be going up the street from across. Uh, what you can see on this side of Stillman uh, is Mr. DeVore's uh, building, which is where Ferrara's uh, restaurant is at the corner. And directly uh, across from this is uh, Kenny Rothman's uh, hardware uh, home goods store uh, across the street. Uh, we also have one letter from Carolyn Conway, which I'll give you some copies of, uh, who's at 77, uh, 77 Salem. Uh, we've actually mailed this three times uh, because of changes in schedules and, and whatnot. So. Uh, that's the taller residential to the right of the house. Right. That's 77. And uh, with a garage in right. And I think other than that, if Chris wants to add anything at the moment, I, I think we'll try to just explain the concept of the new windows. With the original one, if we open them, we were designed for the whole thing would have to be open all at once. With this one here, one side could be open and the other side could remain closed because of the brick barrier. Why does she kind of show everyone? Yep. Let everyone see on the other side. Do you want me to hold them up from here so they can see? Yeah, that's, that's, and also, just 
again, I wasn't at the last meeting, but the concept of putting these trees on the roof is that this is a two-story building. So coming down from Cross Street, what I was trying to do was break up the roof line so when you're walking, you don't see fence, you don't see air conditioning units, things like that. These are the new. Yeah. Yeah. This is the new. That's correct. Here's the old. Here's the old. I don't think the issue was on the I think. I think people were concerned that it might have been an, an outdoor deck. Yes. I think that the right. it is it's great for the building and it's great for the neighborhood. Yeah. Does anyone want to see these? Does anyone want to see these? Yes. Yeah, I see. I'm going to talk Here's the quick answer. I don't want to know. The Verizon will allow people up here. If the neighbors agree with Chris, which I think some of this feedback right. is he is, he would like to dress what he would call dress the parapet. Right. Uh, you know, with some greenery that's on the parapet. It also just give it a nice look to it. Just try to soften it as you're walking down. It'll make something that much for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The green, the, I don't think the green area was the issue. The issue was maybe the outdoor. So you know, for the purpose, you know, we pulled it off so that it wasn't an issue of quote disguising something, hiding something, etc. So uh, once again, Chris would like to uh, decorate and dress the the parapet is the area of the roof that uh, goes around the edge and comes up some distance so people don't go on the roof and just fall off. Um, and they can be used to get the plant or whatever. Anyone on the council? Uh, so is, is the purpose to expand the existing restaurant? Yes. It, it, the, the answer to make you understand it even more so is it would be impossible to have a second restaurant on the second floor. In other words, uh, once again, the restaurant below would lose uh, seating because of the lift that would put in uh, the plan if, uh, uh, I think exactly. I think the same it, it's the same business. It's just additional seating for bouncing. So 34 seats to allow for the lift to go to 30 seats downstairs. Lift being like an elevator? It's, right. it's, it's, it's referred to as right. it's it's a lift glass, because it's not an elevator. It's open air. A well yeah. in a, uh, a half house. What is the kitchen? Yep. In this restaurant. The basement. The basement. The basement. And is that is that based upon demand of this current restaurant that there's the need, need to expand? What what is that based on? Well, it's based on two things. One, from the owner's point of view, which is Chris's point of view, is to try to recapture uh, the investment in the property um, as a result of the requirement to do it again. Uh, that would be his interest is to have more on the site. And the second is that the restaurant owner uh, would. Uh, want the space, lease the space for additional seating uh, upstairs uh, rather than just having the 30 seats downstairs. What happens with like a 34 seat restaurant is if you get a party of 8 or 10, it kind of kills the dining room, so you really can't take a lot of party of floors because most of your table is well deuces, so you, which is a two talk, so you have to push them together, which kind of kills part of the room. This way here, and I know a couple of people have made comments as far as, you know, I walk by, I don't see people there, but it's his right. first winter in the North End, and Giovanni is here, he can speak for it. He just chooses to close a little bit earlier if there is no business due to the snow or the bad weather, as opposed to staying open and just leaving the place empty. I mean, he's just trying to, you know, maintain his business. But with the second floor, if he gets a party of eight or 10 or 12, there's a lot of convention people who are in town now, you know, at the different hotels. If he has it, he doesn't have to refuse the reservation because of a lack of available space if he does take it. And, uh, we told you last time, I'll tell you again, and you may remember from Giovanni's own hearing, Giovanni's operated uh, the original Puccinella in uh, Cambridge for over 20 years. So his track record uh, is excellent. He, he does have a following. Uh, I will say because he won't, but Giovanni had been ill for a while and, and therefore lost some time at the beginning of the startup of the restaurant, uh, which didn't help uh, going into the winter as well. So, uh, uh, as I'm saying, I think Giovanni runs a great restaurant and be very successful in, in the additional space we can help And also, a couple of people that uh, made comments that they thought I was going to build a property up and sell it. That's not the intention here. This, I purchased this property as a long term investment. I'm kind of rooted on Salem Street. I own some other properties. And 
and just trying to take a building that originally looked like an eyesore and just trying to beautify it truly for the whole street. Because, I mean, when it was the hair salon, it had black drapes on it. They were hanging over the front of the building. So I think once it's done, it would be a nice eye catcher when you walk down the street. I've heard people comment when they walk by that they'll go ahead and take the mozzarella bar. They don't view it as a restaurant. Mm -hmm. George, George has a question. Well, after the first time we had the hearing, uh, the first time you guys came over, it took some time to take a walk up and down Salem Street. And, you know, I live right there, and I work on Richmond Street. I didn't realize how much that first block of Salem Street has changed. I mean, it's just amazing how different it is. And the, the different types of businesses we had moved here earlier. It's a nice mix match of things. You know, so it's really brought uh, Salem Street back up to where it used to be. And uh, commerce-wise, and now that uh, Salamantin is talking about changing lighting and, and, and pushing up the sidewalks there too, uh, we're part of the city, I think it's going to look, uh, it looks much better, let me put it that way. I mean, you can see the, the, the before and after photos that people are doing. Uh, so you, you say it's because of Chris's properties, he has yeah, other properties yeah. that he has fixed up that we're yeah, 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 yeah. I think that if you can keep that, make sure that uh, your, your tenant and you guys know that the noise is a big issue and the things you want to remove those and keeping that keep in consideration, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, it's always better to have neighbors that like you closing their windows down for noise and, and that sort of thing. I think the noise goes back to like earlier in the meeting when it was talking about 28th Street Street. I mean, Tony knows me because she's in the real estate business. Uh, you know, I don't tolerate that regardless if it's you know, a restaurant or a residential. There's no complaints against my properties. I maintain them from Saturday to Monday. I sweep the sidewalks. You know, I paint the front of the stores or uh, have them you know, fixed the minute there's a problem with anything. And I actually own Lulu's property. Mm -hmm. so you own Lulu's, you own Phil Benning's property. I own Hawaii. I think, I, I think we have you know, the, whole, the whole idea yeah, of that's that's the property. The neighborhood, we have more responsible people. And you can tell them are responsible. Yeah, that's that's those people are responsible with the property should realize that properties are not good around and make them look that much worse. And there's a lot of that going on. Yeah, Chris, how long will construction take? What will be the construction effects on those two sidewalks? What our intention is, in talking to the general contractor, he's going to stage it with narrow staging. He's saying it should take six to seven weeks to put the exterior structure up. Then we're going to take the staging down and just leave one section of staging on the side of Stillman Street with the ladder up. What I did was, during this construction, as Bill noted, I put in the steel beam and everything's been cut in the existing ceiling. So once the upstairs is somewhat finished and heated, all we have to do is cut <coughs> the floor and put in the stairs and we'll be all set. So I'd say, to answer your question, maybe seven weeks as far as any disruption to the site. Okay, does this, go, <coughs> this goes for BRA design review again? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Anyone? Let me add a point to Josh. I appreciate what Sales from his today, and that is that uh, not that many years ago, I remember when every storefront in Sales Street had steel grates in the city, sponsored a conference to paint them. So that it would be a little bit more attractive because everyone would close at five o'clock and you saw steel grates from the cross street all the way up to Prince. So it's changed a lot since then. My one left, my brother won, he painted the one at uh, Shavari. <laughs> <laughs> how many seats? How many seats do you want me again? Uh, 34. This, uh, it's, it's going from uh, 34 to 66. 34 to 66. Will it be 30 down below? It'll be 30 down below and 36 on the second floor. Anyone else? I'm going to open up to, obviously, the residents. Mm -hmm. Name and address. And uh, first of all, when we first built this, we knew that there was only going to be 30 seats. So having six or eight people come in, um, you knew this all along. So you know it was going to take up your whole restaurant, and I can say there's probably about ten that I can name, at least ten restaurants that only have 30 seats that still do very well um, in their business. Uh, the second thing is, um, from my knowledge, you came before the board many years ago because you bought property on um, Wigan Street. And you asked them to put a second uh, top floor on because you were going to live there and you needed the extra space, but you don't live there. You moved somewhere else and you rent it all out. 
Okay, that's my second issue. Um, the third thing is, years ago, when people started putting second floors, as I'm aware, the neighbors came together and went to City Hall in Boston and said they didn't want second floor restaurants. Okay, and that was the residence of a lot of the North End people, especially on Salem Street, where the sidewalks are so small and you can't even get down the street most of the time. So, um, to do this for him, then that means we're going to have to make exceptions. What am I going to have to do? Make an exception by people calling over she's going to want to go out. And Kenny's going to want to go out. And, you know, everybody on the, everyone's going to start this. This was something that the North End put an end to a few years ago not to do it. We didn't want second floor restaurants. Um, the noise, the trash. Yes, the windows are open. And how many times do we have to call back up to tell them to close their windows? And they're a restaurant with a bar. You have a restaurant with a bar also. It's the same thing. How many times do we have to ask Fioris to be quiet because they expanded out onto their porch? It, it's just, it's too much. It's just too much. I got a petition going of a lot of residents. I have about 75 um, signatures of people that don't want second floor restaurants. They don't want second floor restaurants? They, they don't, don't want, want, and they don't want to put you know to have a second floor restaurant. And a lot of people still in the North End agree to this. They just don't want the extra noise, the extra time. I mean, you know, if you lived there and you had to listen to it, you would agree. You know, a lot of times, um, you know, we, we voted, we voted you people in to listen to the residents of the North End. Okay, and I understand this is a great idea, but him going in from the beginning knew that it was only 34 seats. That was it. How many restaurants do you all know in the North End that only have at least 30 seats, that have lines outside their door? I don't see any need. He wants to put a little shrubbery on the roof. He wants to make it a little bit better, all well and good, but to put a second floor, if we let him do it, and it's just going to go down the line with everything else. And that's why I oppose it, and I'm asking you people to hear what the residents have to say. If I need to get more signatures, that was just over a weekend that I had the time to do. If I needed to get more, I would. They just don't want it, and you know, we're residents speaking to you, asking you to, to stick by us, the people that live here. A lot of his abutters don't even live in the North End. His about is that one person lives there, which is Nikki DeMori. That's it. Nobody else lives there. Hi, Joan Mezzanotti, 11 Wicked Street. And I actually, I'm an owner in uh, the build. I actually own uh, a property that Chris sold. Yes. Okay. So in that building, there are owners who live there, so they're not renters. I just want to make that okay. clear. Okay, all right. But his, 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 his thing, but I, I, I also have some other things to say. But his thing was, so I've lived in the North End for a long time, right? I didn't grow up here, but I've lived here for a long time. The noise, in my opinion, is the college kids. On Wicked Street, it's brutal. It's not the restaurants. It's not the restaurants that have two floors. It's the college kids, right? They wake me up. It's not the restaurants. Again, I don't live right next to a restaurant, so maybe that's my bad, but I'm telling you, it's the college kids that live in the neighborhood, in the north, right? These restaurants, right? I I'm not out at 1, 2 in the morning, I'll be honest with you. I'm in by 10, 11, and it's not the noise of these restaurants. It's the noise of the college kids and the partiers in at the, the roof deck parties. They're on Wicked Street. They're not in Chris's old building that he sold, because my neighbors in my building have three roof decks. They're not out at night. I know that for a fact. It's the college kids on those decks, and it's not at the restaurants. They're closed at 11, 11.30. And just to address Wicked Street, I didn't come in front of the building to put on an additional floor. I came on to put steel decks in the rear of the building for a fire exit and for decking. And I was going to live on a big floor. It turned out to be too small. We had it all done, and I sold it. Because sometimes when you buy something, it doesn't turn out the way you planned it. That's just how it is sometimes. This particular restaurant, initially when Giovanni did his plans, he thought he'd get more seats. You have to put in a handicapped bathroom, you have to put in a set of stairs, you have to put in X, Y, Z. You lose space. That's just part of building something. You can't go in and look at a space and just all of a sudden have it be a fabulous spot. 
it's you have to kind of work with what you have. Yeah. 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 I agree. This is noise from Baco is unbelievable. I hear Fiori's in the back, right, the back of my house. It's crazy. He has an outside deck, he has music and whatnot. Going up on a restaurant, it's a no no. I'm against it. I'd like to make one statement. Getting back to the, you know, speaking with George, you're talking about two locations that have bars, full liquor bars in them, and it's a much, much rowdier atmosphere. Okay, I'm sure that, for instance, your niece's restaurant, she runs a very good establishment. She has her windows that are wide open. There's never a complaint because she's a good restaurant operator. And she expanded into the store next door. There was no problem with that. So expanding into a store or going up, you're still adding space. It depends on the operator and the landline. That's really what it comes down to. Because Baco, I've walked down the street. There's a tremendous amount of noise at Baco. But just on Salem Street, five of the 15, five of the 15 restaurants that have second floors are on Salem Street. Yeah, Which would be the last one? Let me point out the Baco, 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 Baco Conti's. Let me point out a more important element. That we'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you the names of the restaurants in one second. Is when the discussion came about the people not wanting the restaurants to go to second floor, what they were talking about was taking residential units and converting residential units on second floors into restaurant use. This is a single story building that has no residential use, and as we've demonstrated, it's not practical to have residential use on the second floor. Now, next. And so the hearing about the use was, was, was a, as an allowed use, correct? I'm sorry? Was it a, a, a allowed use? The zoning? I didn't hear you earlier. Really. The conditional? Conditional on the first floor, okay. the original change. Next is that we keep hearing about Baco. I don't think anyone here is going to deny that there have been issues with Baco, et cetera. But what you're forgetting is almost directly across the street is La Familia and Wilconti that have had second floor dining for years and years and years. I've never heard any complaints about the second floor dining at La Familia and Wilconti. It's as if they don't even exist. So it's not the second floor dining that's the issue. It's who runs the restaurant whether you're on the first floor or the second floor, uh, and how you run it as far as noise. So Baco has fully open windows and operates more like a bar than it does a restaurant. Uh, we don't have a bar. We have the mozzarella bar. If you've been in there, you can see that there's a couple of seats that are, are set in the kitchen area uh, where you come up with the food. So it's not set up like a bar. You know, go in there and have drinks, etc. This is a dining restaurant. Does anyone else, anyone else, I know Marlene. Marlene, 90 Salem Street. Um, I agree with Darlene, um, as well as, you know, I look at these and like three of these are, one's a business owner, one lives in the, in the area, the other two don't live here. They own tenant buildings. So at four, I'm like, that's the way I look at it in that. But many of those restaurants that do have some work they grandfathered in, um, we, we hear constantly about people complaining about the exceptions to the rule and all these grandfathered in things. We're constantly hearing people complain about them. We hear about Pompeii, we hear about Baco with the second floor, we hear about Bovis with their all night. We always hear about these exceptions that are grandfathered in that we complain about. And we're, we're saying we don't need another second floor restaurant. It doesn't need to be that. And granted, they might be great. Um, business owners and it's great, but what if they need they sell the business? Who's coming in next? Once you get it there, it's allowed to be it for future use. Um, it's just the, the ad noise. I'm like, I, I hear the roof deck on five way all the time, so so let me explain. Yes, there's quite a quite a lot of party up every weekend there. But I also hear the the people at Baco and all the restaurants, and it's not only Baco, it's the restaurants over around the corner. That after work, there are all the people who work in those restaurants are standing outside, talking and yapping all night until like midnight, and that's what they do. You hear the windows open, you hear everything coming from that. It's just high noise and, and all that. I also have a question: if, you, if it was already built, if you said it, um, you took in putting some sort of steel beam in the roof to make sure. Well, if you did that, then something tells me you probably would have already been thinking about putting the second floor on this. Just a thought that I would, I mean, here you are within a year later, the first time coming back. I question when you're going to come back and ask for the roof. I then we're not. That's why we're putting in the proviso, because that eliminates it. And just to give you some background, the original 
person who was going to open the restaurant lost their investment, Marisa Ayoko. So that dragged it along. I personally bought, uh, what's the name of the place? Uh, Grizzle. The, uh, was it Grizzle? I bought Grizzle's liquor license, it's been a wine license for this location. And unfortunately, three weeks into it, the husband died of cancer and he was on the license. So the drag time, if I had known everything was going to happen again, getting back to what you were said, if you know all these things ahead of time, then I would have come in the beginning and done everything at once. But unfortunately, things do change. That's what happens. And there is no, once I put the second floor, that's it. There's nothing else going on in the building. It's done. It's finished. And as far as if for some reason, unforeseeable reason, Giovanni goes out of business, I still own the property. So there will never be a problem coming out of this property as far as works. That I can guarantee you. I mean, I, I, I agree all this, Pompeii, I agree with all that. I totally agree that we have issues. I, but, but what I'd like to do is, I'd like to look at each individual business, each individual property owner, and what I like to do is, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hang the Pompeii and boulders over over the head of a of a, of a new business owner or, or or even a business owner that doesn't even, it's not even open at midnight. I mean, they're closed. What time? 11:30? Not even. Not even. I mean, they're closed at 10:30. I understand what you're saying. Some people are just a little concerned that everything is so condensed and we're starting to really just like congest everything. And I don't see a problem adding. He's adding a. He's adding. He's adding a story, a new story. I understand. There was an issue with um, residents. I, I, I'm not really aware of when they came before the city and, and said no more second stories. Like I know Los Torios is within the building, and Lacanti is within the building, and La Familia's. They're all in the building. He's adding on, you know, for whatever reason. I don't know. Um, maybe financial. Maybe for Giovanni to try to inject some business into the business, um, the current business that is there now. But I mean, I'm not gonna say we have bows in in, in a Pompeii and, and I am I, totally I, understand. I'm more commenting the fact that there are totally there are totally, are, and they're they're totally, they're to totally the late night like issues. There are totally late night issues. Kind of and I am, an and I am, and I am why the rules were put there. So but I don't think this is I don't think this is an exception to anything in, in my in my judgment. I'm just, just I don't think we're making an exception for this is a single story building that's just adding a second story. A lot of the I mean Cooper examples. Street Cooper Street is gonna be here next month. It's a one story used to be a funeral home, they want to go up to fifty five feet. I mean it's so I I just it's just you know, I mean you see a piece of property like that and I don't know. I, 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 I think yeah. what's challenging, though, too, from my perspective, is from a policy and procedure of the council. We voted on this not long ago, and now we're voting on it with only what I see to be just a couple of minor changes. And if we set precedent and did this to everything, and you know, Billy sees if we slowed him down, he could be back with 10 seats the next month. Where, you know, at what level are we willing to kind of we here, we here, we here? From? Because our agenda could be 20, 20 long right now. Where we we sit, right. Where, hold on one second. And we're, 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 the reason we put them back on the agenda is because the plans were changed. He's, he's coming back with different plans. Different so, windows. Different windows and just no green roof. Yeah, which, uh, that <laughs> might have be more than it is what, what it is. I understand. That we did already right. vote. Jim. Jim Carey from Southern Jackson Avenue. And I'm not on South Street, so I don't, I don't hear some of the noise that you guys hear. And I respect that and understand that. Completely. I really do care. Um, but... John, to your point, I think Bill is, is in November, and I was here at that November meeting, yeah. and I was not crazy about the idea of this and had some of the same concerns. And I heard your, your passionate speech in November, and I was, I, you swung me in support of you, you really did. But Bill has come back, and he's, he's actually brought the property owner back with him. And, and to show respect to the council and show respect to all of us, that listened to some of the concerns that were raised in November, and that addressed a number of those concerns. And I think that they've nailed it. And if they want, I, I think they've done exactly what they should do, and that is come back to the council after hearing the concerns and say, here are our new plans. We're asking you to support it. I don't think just because you voted them down in November, <coughs> you have a right to forever stop forever but they come back. They, they've come back with more than minor changes but they're, they're pretty substantial changes and, and I think they've done a good job hearing you all up and hearing us all for that reason I would urge you guys to support it and one more thing in, in regards to the about it, I, I totally I understand you know I'm looking at who signed and they don't live in the north end other than Nick 
yeah. and you know whatever about Nick, but um, I mean they do own the building where people live, and you know they have tenants who may come and go, and it's it's tough when you're notifying your buddies because doing this and you know I work at City Hall, there's always someone who doesn't get notified. There's always the the argument. Well, I'm a property owner. Why didn't I get notified? And you know, you send a letter to the property owner of Free Stillman Street, and he lives in Florida, and he never gets the notice. And then I'll get a phone call. I must have been notified. We had the conversation. I actually about, am one of those. People and then you know, there's times when a, just the property owner gets notified, and the residents don't get notified. So the, see, the letters are meant to support him, but they don't live there. No, I understand, but they have a vested interest in the building. They They're going to rent to people but who may be inconvenienced by what we're going to do. Right, but do they do they have letters from their tenants and then says that they're not they're not going to be inconvenienced by this? I mean, but Steve, the point I'm trying to make is the tenants may move out next month. That's what I'm trying to say. Yes. Is a lot I mean, of influence. years ago when they wanted to put Dunkin' Donuts on Hanover Street, and you know we all fought not to because it was under your window and. So now it's under my window. What's the difference? No, I, like, I don't understand that. Yeah. There's a big you don't want the so trucks on the street and you don't want all the extra people. But that, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't want the second floor with windows open and have to listen to more noise. And we the people that vote. We the people live there. there. I know. But that was, that was also, A, that was 10 years ago. It's a valid point. So we still got a valid point. But we had, we had the residents saying to you that we don't want this. How much more do, do we have to do this? It, it, you know, you give it to The room was also filled with 100 people in, 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 in opposition, to be honest with you. Just... I understand that, but that's my point. Why are you sticking up for it, Steve? You're sticking up for who? You're a president. You should mind your business. If you have to vote, then you raise your hand. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on to the meeting. Just like if I choose not to call on you, I won't call on you. Oh, you won't call on No, I won't. Well, I'm in a bottle, like and I can say I whatever I want. Here. I'm elected just like and everyone else. And here. unfortunately, I'm going to convene this, and I'm going to let someone make a motion. Now, now no one else gets to speak. Anyone want to make a motion? I'll make, a, I'll make a motion to support. Uh, uh, no one else can speak because you're not going to let them. So go ahead, make a motion to support. Anyone second the motion? There's a motion on the floor from Ann and seconded by Bill to support um, 7, 7880 from um, Salem Street. Uh, seating zoning relief at a second floor addition, proposed addition to expand the restaurant currently occupying the property from 34 seats to 66. Is that correct? Well, the, the, the seating is a, is a part of the zoning issue. To be, then no to be problem. You got it. The zoning issue is to I got you. expand to the second floor with the proviso that no patrons are allowed on the roof. All in favor? Six to two. Did I count right, Phil? All opposed. Let's count all opposed. All opposed? Two. Six to two. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.